Hey everybody, it's Dakota Mays. Today I got a yoga flow for beginners, so we're gonna take it easy, especially if this is your first time hopping on the mat or your first few times. I'm gonna take it very slow and guide you through the process of maybe just starting your yoga journey. So we're gonna start right away in tabletop. Nice, simple movements to start out. So you've probably heard before of cat-cow. So just bring your hands under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. Find your neutral spine and just find a breath here. Just sort of evening out the spine. Maybe get a little bit of extension. And on your next inhale, all we're gonna do is drop this belly button and reach the chest forward like you're gazing towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, it's curl and round. So you're just tucking in the chin and the tailbone. Let's do a couple more of those. So inhale, just sort of opening up the front body. And then exhale, curling in. So let's do one more of these. And excuse all the noise. I'm in the busy streets of Mexico right now. So there's sirens, there's trucks, there's laundry machines going on everywhere. There's lots of noise. But whenever you find your neutral spine, we're gonna go side to side next. So just do a little side bend, a little J shape for the low spine, just to warm up the spine. And if you just starting yoga practice or you're just beginning your yoga practice, I always like to start with giving some love and attention to my spine before I start flowing. So once you're feeling good here, let's do spine circles. So take this middle vertebrae, just draw some circles here. So I like to inhale as I round at the bottom and exhale at the top. And these can be really small circles, so inhaling and exhaling, just connecting your breath with your movement. Big part of yoga practice. Inhale and exhale. And go ahead and switch directions. So maybe these circles are really small, maybe they're pretty big, depending on your mobility of your spine. But we're just lubricating all the vertebrae right now, again, before we start flowing. And whenever you're good, find a neutral spine. We're just gonna curl in the toes here and make our way into a down dog. So you probably heard of down dog before, I hope. So just pedal it out here first. I'm gonna help you with your alignment in just one moment. So at first, just pedal out the feet, maybe shake out the shoulders. Let the head be relaxed, the neck relaxed. Maybe shake the head yes and no. Oh, wonderful. So from here, you can see my heels are off the ground, my knees are bent, and my spine is straight. What I see a lot of beginners do, they want to lock out the knees here, and it rounds out the spine like so. So we don't want that. We want a straight spine and down dog. So whatever your body feels like, bend the knees until you feel the belly button start to drop, and the low back start to get straight. And as you get warm, or as you you know get into your yoga practice more and more, you'll feel that you need less of a bend to the knees. So once you feel good in the low spine, make sure the chest isn't forward. You're opening up your heart, but you're not opening up too much, falling down like so. We don't need any of this. Again, just that straight line. And with your elbows, maybe the eyes of the elbows might be pointing down or towards one another. You want them to open up, point at this little 45 degree angle. So I'm externally rotating my arms, pushing with this serratus anterior muscle on the outside of the body. So you get this nice little push. And again, your neck is relaxed here. And this is a comfortable down dog. So you're pressing through your hands, pressing the hips up and away from the hands. Nice straight spine. Let's find one more breath. And we're just gonna gaze between the hands. Start to walk the feet to the hands at the top of the mat. Once you meet them, inhale, halfway lift. We're gonna pause here. So we do a lot of halfway lifts here. So we just wanna bring some attention here. I like to keep my fingertips on the ground. Maybe you use yoga blocks or maybe you use your shins. But what we want, we wanna drop the belly button, use the low back muscles and get a straight spine like you're reaching the crown of the head away from the hip bones. We don't want any rounding here or anything. We want a straight spine, nice little hamstring stretch. So find one more inhale here. Awesome, then exhale, fold forward here. Just grab each elbow, pause for a moment. Maybe shake it out. Maybe shake the head out a little bit. Yes, no. Make sure your weight is really falling over top. Your toes are heavy. Not all of your weight is through your heels. Nice little hamstring stretch for one more exhale. Wonderful. We're gonna roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. So you really just come slowly. Your head will come up last as you stand up nice and controlled. 
into it. Inhale, let's reach the hands up to the ceiling. And then exhale, hands of heart center. So what we're gonna do is the sun salutation together. So we're gonna do a few breaths each moment, just going slow, and then we'll start picking up the pace. So again, you're a beginner here, just taking it nice and slow first. So let's inhale, reach the hands up to the ceiling, keep the spine straight. As you exhale, fold forward all the way down. This, the low back stays straight until you fall down. And then inhale, halfway lift, back into that half lift. And then exhale, plant your hands down, step the feet back either into a plank pose or a chaturanga where you lower down to a 90 degree angle. Push up, elbows stay in. And then inhale, up dog. And let's pause here for a few breaths. So up dog, what we don't want is the eyes, the elbows to the front. We want to point the elbows, the eyes, the elbows towards one another. Pull the shoulders back so you don't, you don't want your shoulders leaning forward here and pulling forward. We want to open up the heart here, just like our dogs do in the morning, and they're up dog. Awesome. And just reach the crown of the head up. No need to try to gaze back or anything. So go ahead and find one more inhale here. And as you exhale, pull from the low stomach, we're going to make our way into down dog. And find a few breaths here. Maybe you shake it out at first. Again, your head is heavy, your neck relaxed, really pressing through the hands. And as you get warm through each flow, you'll notice your down dog is just your home base pose where we come back to, but it feels better every time we come back to it. So go ahead and find one more inhale here, and then exhale. Let's gaze between the hands. This time, either jump or step to the top. Inhale back into that halfway lift. Use your lower back muscles, reach the crown forward, and then exhale, fold forward. Great. Inhale, bend at the knees, straighten out the back, and we're going to stand up all the way. And then exhale, hands at heart center. Good stuff. We're going to do one breath, one movement this time, speeding it up. So inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, fold it forward. Keep all those same cues in your mind. Inhale, halfway lift. Get that straight spine. Exhale, jumper step back into your plank or chaturanga. Inhale, press it up, up dog. And then exhale, pull from the low stomach, down dog. Wonderful gaze between the hands. Jumper step to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, stand up all the way. No rounding the back as you stand up. And then exhale, hands of heart center. Good stuff, so that's a sun salutation A. We're gonna move to a B this time. So let's bend the knees a little bit here. Inhale, reach the hands up. Pause here in chair pose. So what I want you to do is pull into the lower navel. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. You're gonna hear a lot of yogis say that a lot because that's a yogi lock. It keeps you balanced, keeps you firm, and it protects the midsection, protects your core. So from here, one more inhale, reaching the hands up away from the hips. As you exhale, let's fold it forward. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, step or jump back into your plank or chaturanga. Inhaling, up dog. Roll the shoulders back, open heart. Exhale, down dog. So what we do this time is we're going to step this right foot in between the hands, we're gonna come into a warrior. So I like to bring right foot first, so let's inhale, step this right foot by the right thumb, and then come up into a lunge pose. So here, my hips are square to the front of the room. Nice little bend here in the right knee, the knee's right over the heel, and the left knee can have a bend too. If your left hip flexor is super flexible, you might be able to lock it out, but I like to leave a nice little bend here. So let's find one more inhale here. As you exhale, hands wrap that right foot again, step it back, we lower down chaturanga or plank. Inhaling up dog. Exhale down dog. Left side, inhale, step the left foot forward. Step it down, come on up, and pause for a couple breaths. So again, your hips are square. Bring that left knee right over that left heel. We're warming up the lower body with this. Gotta love sun bees. Your hands are light, shoulders are relaxed, just reaching up, one more inhale. And as you exhale, hands wrap that left foot. Again, we're lowering down chaturanga or plank. 
Inhaling up dog. Exhale down dog. Let's pause for a few breaths. So now you feel the body getting warm. So as always, you use sun salutations just to warm up the body before you start mixing it up. At least that's my style of doing things. So here, maybe shake out the hips a little bit. So again, down dog is an exploration pose, home base pose. You can come back to, maybe sway the hips left and right, maybe pedal out the feet a little bit. Keep that push through the hands. Leave the neck relaxed, the head is heavy. And you keep that lower navel pulled in. So that lower navel here, always draw it in. Getting that extra little reach through the low spine. Find your last exhale here. And gaze between the hands. Jump your step to the top. Inhaling halfway lift. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, stand up all the way. Keep your knees bent though. In the chair pose, it's two breaths. Maybe dig a little bit deeper here. It's up to you how low you go. One more inhale. And then exhale, stand up, hands heart center. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but one breath, one movement. We got it, bend the knees, inhale, reach the hands up, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward all the way down. Inhaling, halfway lift. And exhale, step or jump back. Plank or chaturanga, up to you. Inhaling up dog, we're getting the rhythm of it now. Exhale down dog. So only one inhale, step this right foot in between the hands, come up lunge pose. And then right away, exhale chaturanga. Inhaling up dog. Exhaling down dog. Going left foot this time, inhale, step it forward, come up lunge pose. Exhale, chaturanga. So picking up the pace here, you get the body warm. Inhaling up dog. Exhale, down dog. Pause, three breaths. Shake it out. Shake the head, yes, no. And when you first start your yoga practice, you might find that down dog, you know, it, it does take effort, of course, and it's an inversion. You might not be used to it. But as you get used to it, it really becomes this relaxation pose. So it just becomes this pose you come back to and you're like, oh gosh, yes, got a break. <laughs> and you'll, you'll see what I mean over time as you get more comfortable with the pose. So from here, let's gaze between the hands, jump or step to the top. Inhaling halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Bend the knees, inhale, come up into your chair pose again. And then exhale, stand up. Awesome, pause for a breath. Just recollect yourself, feeling the body warm. Now we're gonna add some vinyasa to it. So you've got the general sequence down, the general skeleton. We're gonna add just a little bit to it, not, to, not anything crazy today, of course. But just a little bit to give us a little vinyasa flow in here. So let's inhale, reach the hands up. Just regular reach. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga, lower down. Inhaling up, dog. Exhale, down, dog. This time, let's inhale, reach this right foot to the ceiling. Three-legged down, dog, keep the hips square if you can. And then exhale, step this foot down in between the hands again. Inhaling into our lunge pose. Let's pause for one breath. Let's take your time here. Find another inhale. And this time, let's exhale, open up warrior two. So now we're opening up to the left side. Keep this right knee on top of that right heel and make sure you can see your right big toe. So your hips are right under you. You're not doing anything like this. You're not twerking out. <laughs> your hips are right under you. This knee's over the right heel. You can see the right big toe. We're gazing over the right middle finger. And from here, one more inhale. And on an exhale, we're gonna bring this right elbow to the right knee reach the left arm over top. So this is called side angle pose. We're gonna hold this for three breaths. So press through the outer edge of that left foot and feel your whole side body get long, reaching this left arm up and away. Feels good. One more inhale. As you exhale, left hand comes to the ground. Right hand wraps around the right foot too. Straighten out this right leg. 
So you can come up onto the left toes here if you want, or you can leave that heel down. It's up to you. I'm gonna come up onto the toes. This is called pyramid pose. So if you need a micro bend in this right knee, that's fine, go ahead and bend. If you need a couple of fingertips, that's also good. But what we're gonna do here is if you can, lock out this right knee, send that right hip crease back, and you get a wonderful hamstring stretch. Maybe your body lets you go lower, fold forward. Maybe not, it's okay. Just pausing for one more breath. Get a nice little stretch in that right leg. Great, on your next inhale. Bend at the right knee, come back up into your lunge, pick yourself up, and then exhale, take your vinyasa. So that includes the chaturanga or plank. Inhaling up dog. Exhaling down dog. Same thing, but left side. Inhale, left foot reaches up. As you exhale, step that foot down in between the hands. We come up as you inhale into your lunge pose. Pause for a breath. So again, you stay deep that left knee. The left knee stays over the left heel the whole time. Find one more inhale. And as you exhale, we're opening up to the right this time. Keep that bend, stay deep. Make sure you can see the left big toe. We're gazing over the left middle finger. Feels good. <laughs> One more inhale. As you exhale, same thing. Elbow to knee, reach this right hand over top, side angle pose. Get along here. So feel that right side body, get some space. Maybe, maybe the gaze is up at the right hand. And make sure you're not slouching here in the shoulder here. See that sometimes. Make sure you keep some space from the left shoulder, left ear. One more inhale. As you exhale, right hand comes down, left hand comes down. Wrap the left foot, figure out what you want to do with the right foot. And we're just going to straighten out this left leg till you find your point, and then you stop. So maybe you stay up here like this. If your body allows it, you fold forward. Let's find what works good for you. This is pyramid pose. So you're stacking right over the left leg. Let the head be heavy. One more breath. And on your next inhale, we're gonna bend this left knee, come back up into our lunge pose. As you exhale, you take your vinyasa. So maybe plank or chaturanga. Inhaling up dog. Exhale to your down dog. Wonderful, three breaths here. So see, once you come back to your down dog, it is a rest pose. <laughs> so once you come back, just shake it out a little bit if you need to. I'm always playing with my body because after each sequence, your body's just a little bit more open, a little bit more warm. And then you can explore that in your down dog. So maybe find your last breath here. Still down dog, press through those hands, get the spine long, really try to drop the belly button through the inner thighs. And engage between the hands. Jump or step to the top. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, stand up all the way. Remember, use the low back to get you up. Don't round. And then exhale, hands of heart center. We're going to do one more. Adding just a little bit more of a twist to it. We got this. Inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhaling, halfway lift, find that flat back. Exhale, jump back or step back, plank or chaturanga. Inhaling, up dog. Exhale to your down dog. We inhale, right foot reaches up, three-legged down dog. Exhale, bring that foot down in between the hands, right by that right thumb. Inhale into your lunge. This time, we're gonna exhale, twist to the right. So we're not opening to the left, twisting to the right. Make sure your chest isn't leaning forward. Your chest stays over the hips. Stay deep into that right knee. One more breath here, inhale. And this time we're gonna bring hands to heart center. Exhale, we're gonna bring the left elbow to right knee. So this time, a little twist for your side angle pose. So you can keep your hands to heart center here for a little twist. Feels good here. If for some reason, you know this, you're a beginner here, but you're still, you're really flexible through the midsection, you might be able to drop this left hand down to the ground, reaching this right hand over top, finding that twisted side angle pose. More of an advanced pose, intermediate pose. 
Maybe you keep the hands at heart center. Wherever you are, one more breath, inhaling. And as you exhale, let's let go. Hands wrap around the right leg. This time, straighten the right leg out. And what we're gonna do here is bring the left hand down, open up the right hand to the ceiling. So we're in a little twisted triangle pose. And where the stretch is here is at the outer edge, the outside of this right leg, this IT band. So you get this nice stretch. If you don't feel it, you can come back over, make it a little bit more of an advanced pose. You step this left hand over that foot, and then you find your twist. Then you'll definitely feel it, I promise. <laughs> and you use that left hand to open the chest to the right side of the room. Reaching the right hand up, one more breath here. Great, as you exhale, right hand comes down, bend the knee, find your vinyasa. So you know what to do, chaturanga, then inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left side, inhale, reach the left foot up. Exhale, stepping that foot down by that left thumb. Inhale into your lunge pose. And then exhale, twist to the left. Stay deep here. So that left knee stays deep, chest over hips. Give myself a little smile here in the mirror. Staying deep here, it's fun. One more inhale. And again, as you exhale, bring the hands to heart center. You find whatever variation here you want, but maybe the right elbow just goes over the left knee. Use the hands, use that left hand to open up the chest to the left side of the room. So stop where your body feels good, where you can still breathe, you can still access full breath. And then breathe. Maybe you can drop the hand down here if you did on the other side, reaching this left hand over top. Find your last breath. Just keep breathing, it's the main thing here. We're, we're just connecting with ourselves here. Connecting our movement with our breath. Wonderful. On your next exhale, left hand comes down. So maybe if you like it on the other side, you can keep this straight and just lock out your leg right here. But if you want, you bring the hand over. It just makes it a little bit less intense. Gives you more room to breathe here, midsection. So maybe you play around with that. I like to step my hand over the foot. Really feel that stretch right there on the outside of the left leg. The IT band stretch. Maybe you haven't stretched in a while. Maybe it feels really weird. <laughs> Wherever it feels, just breathe through it. One more inhale. As you exhale, bend the left knee. We're gonna make our way into our chaturanga. Inhaling up dog. Exhale, down dog. Good job. Down dog, five breaths. This is your last down dog of the day. So again, just feeling back into this. Maybe now after you got your legs a little bit more warm, maybe you can drop the heels a little bit more, or maybe you can lock out the knees a little bit more. Or not lock them out, but just straighten them out just a little bit. As long as it doesn't round your back. If it starts to round your back like so, we don't want that. We want to keep the back straight. Keep breathing. One more inhale and full exhale. Great. We're going to gaze between the hands. We're just going to step forward and we're going to sit on down. So just sit down on your butt, however you want. And we're going to straighten out the legs out in front of us. So I'm gonna go through a forward fold. It's really a basic pose, but I wanna give you some cues that you might not get if you've just done this in the gym, you know, by yourself. So what we wanna do is bring the hands to your side, roll the shoulder blades back, and lift the chest up. So try to get along through the spine. Maybe the chin drops slightly, but the crown of the head is reaching up. So right here, you could feel a stretch already. I definitely have students who feel a stretch here just without doing anything. This is called Dandasana pose. But if it feels good here, keep the lower navel pulled in. Let's inhale, reach the hands up, get along through the spine. And as you exhale, bring the hands down, maybe to the shins, maybe to the feet. And we're gonna forward fold. Keep that lower navel pulled in as you go down. And once you find your limit, we're just reaching the crown of the head to the feet. And here, I like to bring a small micro bend to my knees. You don't have to be locked out to where your heels come up off the ground. Just a little bit of engagement of the quads. 
but there's still a micro bend in the knee. Point of the lower navel, reaching the crown of the head to the feet, and breathe. So imagine you're deepening the hip creases back. At the same time, you're trying to kick the heels forward. So again, I said give a little bit of engagement to the quads, but not enough to where you're really locking the knees all the way out. But you're just getting that reciprocal inhibition, so once you engage the quads a little bit, it helps lengthen the bottom sides of the hamstring. One more breath here. And as you come up, just inhale, gaze forward, come up halfway. And then exhale, come the rest of the way out. Great. Bring a bend to your knees. Bring your feet about a foot away from your sit bones. And then bring your hands about a foot away from your butt as well, with your fingers pointing towards you. And from here, there's a few options we can do here. Maybe you just open the chest up like so. You might drop your head back, that's optional. You might just bend your elbows here, sending the elbows back, but keeping them in, don't let them flare out. It's another option. Or you can inhale, lift the hips up in between the knees and shoulders, and the upper plank. Again, dropping the head back is optional. Whatever uh, variation of those you choose, let's find three full breaths. All the variations, opening up the heart and the front delts. Just a nice, you know, counter stretch to a forward fold. After you close in, it just gives you some, a great little bit of, great time to open up. Just balancing out the body, one more inhale. As you exhale, slowly lower the hips down. We're just gonna lie down onto the back. So maybe hug the knees into the heart first. Just rock left and right a little bit. We're gonna go over my favorite supine poses, some basic poses that I do just about every morning and night. Not night, but every morning. So first, Let's grab the inner, reach through the inner sides of our knees, grab the outer edges of the feet, and bring the soles of the feet to the ceiling. So this is happy baby pose. So you might have seen a little kid do this before. I still do it as an adult. <laughs> but you might rock and left here. Rock. Right and left, just massaging the low back if that feels good. And again, sorry about all the construction outside. Just That's just a part of it, you know. Yoga practice will teach you just to go with the flow. <sighs> One more breath here. Great, go ahead and let go of the feet. And we're just gonna bring the knees together here. We're gonna drop side to side for supine twist. So if you want your knees together, that's fine. But I like to bring my right leg over the left for an extra little, you know, little spice to the twist. And then we're gonna drop the legs to the left. Gaze over to the right. And then maybe bring the hand to the stomach here just to be a reminder to breathe through the pose. Just as you start winding down your practice, you know, going towards the end, it's really important to start slowing down the breath and being more mindful of the breath. Just like I said, as you deepen your practice, your breath is really just the main thing that comes. It's that white light moving inside of your body helping you let go of those deeper levels of tension and stress being held into the body. So after your last exhale, let's bring the legs back to the center and just switch legs. So maybe your knees were together, maybe you had your legs wrapped. If they were wrapped, left over right this time. And we're gonna drop the knees over to the right. Gaze to the left. Maybe the hand comes to the stomach. Three full breaths here. There's no resistance to the pose, just breathing through the pose, letting gravity do its job. And with every exhale, you just fall deeper and deeper into the pose. Supine twists are one of my favorite, just evening out the spine. So find your last breath here. And then when you're ready, make your way back to the center. 
You might hug your knees together one last time. Just give a little rock left and right. And we're gonna come into our final pose, Shavasana. So straighten out your legs all the way. Open up your hands to your side to where the palms are facing the ceiling. And I like to bring my feet wide enough to where my toes just fall to the outer edges of the mat. And this Shavasana pose, it stands for corpse pose, where you do absolutely nothing. <laughs> so after your movement practice, you, you just end with a nice pose to where you just let your body restore itself. So no activation of anything right now. So let's take a full body scan from the toes all the way to the crown of the head. Doing your best to relax everything in the body. And now as you start winding down into this pose, feeling your body get heavier, you realize again you're using your breath. Only movement is coming from the breath. And I want you to feel your breath move through your body. Again, it's that little white light letting go of tension wherever you're holding on to tension at. Just send your breath there, let it go. And using this pose just to connect with yourself in a more yin-like manner. And as always, you can hold this pose for as long as you need. Just letting the body come to itself. Just very restorative pose, just letting your breath do its thing. And if you come back to another flow, I hope to see you again. Most of my flows are very, you know, power-based, but either way, it was good to have you here for the start of your journey, and I hope this flow helped you just like, you know, step onto your mat and uh, maybe learn a couple things to where it's just really about the basics. It's all about the basics at the end of the day. Once you have your basic skeleton down, you can start exploring your practice however you want. So I hope to see you again for some of my more advanced flows. If not, either way, it was good to have you today. Until next time, namaste.